university. And I'm um, thankful for Professor Asaf Lichkovsky uh, and uh, also for Berg Foundation to have such possibility. Uh, yes, I am too loudly. Good. Uh, so today's uh, lecture is about uh, the region, the early history of comparative law. Uh, we will speak uh, about the uh, beginning uh, of uh, 19th century and about first third of uh, 19th century. It's uh, quite an interesting period. Uh, some of uh, researchers uh, um, not analyzing this period, others are not conceptualiz conceptualizing this period. But anyway, uh, it, uh, it is worth of attention and I will show you this. So first uh, we will speak about preconditions of origin of uh, comparative law. And uh, then we will speak about three dimensions of uh, comparative law in the early 19th uh, century. Um, the development of theoretical foundations of comparative legal studies uh, is impossible to imagine without singling out the uh, subject matter and the object uh, thereof. One of the determinative prerequisites for the development of the subject matter of comparative legal studies was the genesis of the subject matter of the legal sciences in general. The dualism of this subject matter over the centuries, natural and positive law, reflected the syncretic nature of the general doctrine on law with philosophy, uh, proposed not only the lack of self-value of, of the existing positivist uh, legal orders, but also the incidentality of the peculiarities of these legal orders, uh, subordinated the pluralism to, to a monist, uh, monistical benchmark, uh, metaphysical benchmark. Uh, accordingly, the effectuation of comparative legal studies of such incidental phenomena made no sense, and information concerning foreign law might have a narrow practical significance or serve as an illustration for a priori use naturalist schemes. The essence of the gradual transformation of the understanding of the subject matter of jurisprudence from the time of Reformation to the Enlightenment was primarily the secularization of nation, uh, natural law, uh, which made possible the cognition of this natural law by means of philosophy outside theological dogmatics, and also the recognition of the autonomy of human will in law, which increased the significance of positive law as a sphere of human rationality. But only in the 18th and early 19th centuries was the non-universal, non-metaphysical, non-legal character of natural law proclaimed, which being a creation of human soul, it was brought out of the limits of jurisprudence. Natural law was deprived of any positive content and came to be regarded as negative determines the limits of law, or as a generalization of positive law. The exclusivity of positive law, existing empirically cognizable law, uh, transformed national legal orders into self-sufficient subject matter of research, enabled them, these legal orders, to be considered as manifestation of a human legal experience, and the diversity of these legal orders as non-incidental and a stable phenomenon which requires scientific contemplation. This, the, processes, uh, the process of uh, transformation of the subject sphere of law and the object of legal sciences also was long. It began in the 16th century with recognition of the autonomy of social sphere of existence uh, of man uh, and singling out of secular ethics of human relations, 
which did not coincide with the doctrine of the Catholic Church. This was gradually realized in the ideas of social integration, the forms of which are, in particular, society and the state, and also the autonomy of uh, social law, uh, I mean created by society, including institu institu institutionalized in state, uh, and uh, uh, created by groups within uh, the limits of the state. The ideas of the territoriality of societies, their localization in space, were a prerequisite for recognition of social and legal pluralism in the world and the equality of uh, human societies and of social legal orders. Uh, second time, by social, I mean created by society here. It's not a social law in the uh, contemporary understanding. A new subject of legal development gradually recognized was the nation, and the national legal order became the object of the science of law. The idea of nation as a functional community by its personal and territorial embrace is identical to a society of um, the volitional uh, state construction and law make, making of which nation uh, rests on a lengthy historical tradition and is one of the expressions of organic and spiritual cultural development, collective rationality, finally absorbs man in, uh, in itself, in nation and uh, in the state, in society, combines the subjective and, object, and objective view, legitimizes uh, national state and law, and simultaneously confirms the equality and pluralism of legal orders. The, processes, uh, the process of uh, the development of the doctrine of private and public national law corresponds to this ideological development, as does the socialization of the doctrine of international law uh, from the 16th to 18th centuries, which was uh, based on the expanded interpretation and um, interpolation uh, of the doctrine of Roman law its combination with customary law, and also the juridicization uh, of the secular ethic of social uh, relations, the principled basis uh, of the doctrine of private and public national law became a contractual coordination of individual wills. The doctrines of national public law and international law acted as two aspects of the confirmation of sociality and territoriality of national legal orders, their self-sufficiency, equality, multiplicity, and uh, essential unity as the exclusive uh, unit of pluralist legal development, the individual in law, so collective individual in law. Uh, a result of 300 years of development of social thought in Europe from 16th to 18th centuries became the destruction of the idea of the theocentric hierarchical world and confirmation of a new social worldview, secular, horizontal, not hierarchical world, horizontal, pluralist and comparativist in essence. The principal subjects uh, of which uh, became the social associations formed on the basis of uh, rational or irrational will uh, of people, societies, nations, states. The monist and total world gradually dissolved into petty volitional monads, individuals, and a new world was constructed on uh, its uh, ruins, world of social and political and legal totalities, equal and uh, sovereign by virtue uh, of being endowed the, uh, with equal and sovereign uh, will through a positive social contract, society or state, and by social con consciousness as nation. A world was born of peculiarities and differences, 
which could not be cognized either by uh, metaphysical philosophy or by natural law or dogmatic legal thought. The methodologies uh, based on the approaches of theosophy, philosophy and natural and technical sciences proved to be insufficient to recognize this new social, including, including social, uh, socio-legal positive reality, which finally materialized after the French Revolution and the uh, Napoleonic Wars. Namely, uh, this uh, cognitive crisis led to the forming or fundamental transformation of positivist uh, social sciences as a whole and confirmation of the transformed jurisprudence as a positivist social science in particular. One of the constitutive elements which may ensure its unity, the unity of this uh, uh, jurisprudence as science, under conditions uh, of the bankruptcy of philosophical monism, should have become comparative legal knowledge. The path to mastering the new subject matter and object of jurisprudence, comparative cognition of positivist uh, legal reality, was already approved earlier in uh, the sciences of on men, let them call in this way. In anatomy, the comparative approach led to universalization of its subject matter and awareness of the non-uniqueness uh, uh, of uh, human nature uh, allowed the classification of organism into species to be effectuated and also identified two models for organization of comparative uh, knowledge obtained as one of the foundations of science and as a special comparative discipline within the framework of science, uh, if we consider science as a complex of scientific disciplines. In the second half of the 18th century and, uh, century and the early 19th century, the comparative approach was regarded as one of the principal means for the transformation of all sciences including the humanities and the social sciences, the basis for the development of which became a conviction of the distinctness of the social nature of man, the essence of which was freedom, self-development, non-substantial and historical, and diversity. This was consistently realized in linguistics and history, uh, the grounds being renu uh, renunciation of uh, theological and abstract assertions, combining of historical and comparative approaches, single criteria for phenomena evaluation, identification of interactions and classification. A consequence of this uh, became the forming of such disciplines as comparative linguistics and uh, general or uh, worldwide history. Comparative legal studies grown directly from state science, statistics, but statistics in the understanding of 18th and 19th century meant not just uh, mathematics, it means the science about state, uh, which developed strongly during the first half of the 18th century. And uh, it's Comparative character, character of uh, state studies and approaches were noted and also led to the conceptualization of the separate discipline of comparative state science or comparative statistics. And the subject matter included material elements and contexts of the functioning of public and private law. The brightest and uh, in, uh, influential reflection of the development of uh, prerequisites uh, for the emergence, uh, emergence of uh, comparative legal studies were the works of Montesquieu, who performed a large-scale uh, synthesis of positive law and legal thought of uh, various peoples, noted the conditionality and irresistibility of the diversity of legal orders proposed an original vision of the classification and interaction of national legal orders and also the 
individual, particular or special and general in legal development. Like uh, three main uh, elements in this uh, structure, in this understanding. Individual, like national legal order, particular or special, it's like uh, larger circles of uh, uh, national legal orders and general, what is general, what is uh, worldwide in the, the legal development. Contemplation of Montesquieu uh, works became the foundation for the conscious reset and conceptualization of comparative knowledge in jurisprudence. That, uh, um, this about prerequisites. And uh, now I want uh, to tell, uh, to distinguish three dimensions of early comparative jurisprudence or comparative law. Uh, uh, first, I have to note that uh, comparative law is uh, erroneous term, absolutely erroneous and misleading term, because it's not a branch of law. Comparative jurisprudence was an original uh, term, uh, it was such in German legal science, for example, it was such in uh, many other uh, legal uh, national legal traditions, and uh, um, for the moment it's not so much popular term, but anyway. So, three dimensions of early comparative jurisprudence. The studies and the knowledge we obtain, uh, I obtained uh, thanks to uh, them uh, could be systematized and used in different uh, ways. Uh, the early comparative jurisprudence uh, was a phenomenon with at least three dimensions. As an approach in legal science or, or in legal sciences, as a principal element of legal worldview, namely the way of constructing a world picture, and as a cluster of autonomous legal disciplines constructed at that time. They all are interconnected, interconnected and in this context it is not so much important if you consider now comparative law or comparative jurisprudence to be autonomous discipline or not. It doesn't matter much. I like the metaphor of uh, Patrick Glenn, uh, one of his uh, last speeches, uh, public speeches. Comparative law as discipline is a bearer of a certain complex of uh, knowledge and ideas and aspires to reveal them, enrich with them all legal sciences. And it, it, it is like a Cheshire cat that could disappear and only smile is lasting. So when the aspiration of this discipline will be fulfilled and all lawyers will be able to absorb the ideas of comparative law, the last comparative lawyer will disappear happily. Uh, it's a wrong metaphor. I like it, but it's a wrong metaphor, uh, but I like it. Anyway, uh, comparative lawyers or comparatists will not disappear. And, uh, but anyway, uh, what uh, I wanted to say is that it didn't matter much uh, discussions about uh, separate discipline or not because because it was uh, it, it functioned uh, uh, it uh, uh, it existed and functioned and uh, in different ways and conceptualized and institutionalized in different ways as a discipline as a cluster of disciplines as a approach in legal science and most important and most interesting as a generator of a special and very interesting and deep uh, uh, world picture. So, first dimension, an approach in uh, legal science. Uh, the second half of uh, the 18th and uh, the first third of the uh, 19th centuries is a period of the final separation of legal knowledge from philosophy and uh, the forming of, on the basis thereof of uh, positivist, social and empirical legal science. Scholars unequivocally uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the autonomy of uh, the science of positive law, including the forming of an own system of concepts 
on the basis of empirical studies, and also denied the possibility of natural law as a law proper, because of uh, which uh, the historical philosophical and historical orientations of legal thought may be deemed to be different aspects of the early development of positivism, both most known schools in Europe uh, uh, in the early 19th century uh, were positivist. Uh, a combining uh, a course in the doctrines thereof of empirical legal knowledge and legal doctrine and legal science was deemed to be a separate sphere of activity of the US. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, the, K, uh, the K work of uh, Savigny, if you remember, uh, the vocation of our uh, time for, uh, for, for legal science and, uh, yes, and jurisprudence. The, uh, the word vocation, nobody analyzed this word. This word in German is the uh, same that um, uh, Luther used on the beginning of 16th century when he told that, uh, you know, uh, um, secular professions could be professions, not just seen activity, but professions. And so uh, Savigny was Protestant, was L L Lutheranist, uh, Lutheran, and he uses the same word for pointing and for stressing that legal science, not only just practical legal activities, but legal science, uh, uh, theoretical part of this science, could be a special activity, a special profession. Uh, nobody noted, but anyway, uh, it, it was uh, on ice, but nobody noted. But anyway, uh, so. Uh, it was um, uh, also acknowledged uh, that the subject matter of legal science transcends the limits of the national legal order and encompasses the diversity of legal orders and their interaction. And uh, it itself, uh, itself, on the basis of empirical cognition, creates the general doctrine on law. Therefore, uh, the comparative uh, legal approach became inevitable and uh, its significance for building legal knowledge was extensively recognized and conceptualized and not uh, generated objections. Uh, here I can uh, um, uh, name as example, for example, uh, Göttingen professor uh, Jürgen Tüter the author of the most authoritative handbook of Encyclopedia of Laws. It's the second uh, half of 18th century. Um, for about 50 years it was the most uh, authoritative handbook on law in whole Europe, not only in uh, Germany. Uh, he borrowed the comparative approach in statistics the science of the state, uh, from his friend and colleague, uh, also Göttingen professor, Achenwald, who wrote that, uh, the work Comparative uh, Statistics. Uh, in the belief that this approach enabling the peculiarities of uh, national law to be studied. Peter pointed out that the empirical legal science should study the differences, similarities and interconnections between legal orders of all times and peoples, uh, establishing their cause, causes and uh, effects. And he emphasized that the comparison of law is the foundation of a new approach in legal studies. Peter singled out within the science of law national jurisprudences uh, each nation uh, studies, studies its own law and legal encyclopedia which encompasses uh, data concerning the laws of all peoples and times. He relegated to the sphere of legal encyclopedia, inter alia, uh, the classification of legal orders already in uh, the middle of 18th century. Uh, the working out of uh, methodics, uh, of research technique, of comparative legal studies, 
and in many places insisted on the use of comparison when resolving tasks of uh, this discipline, of legal encyclopedia. In this treatise, uh, in his treatise, uh, Peter referred to the comparison of law in force in a, suitab in a su subtitle, uh, singling out uh, a separate section, the name of this uh, subtitle, uh, subtitle uh, on the difference of positive laws uh, because of the difference of times and peoples. Uh, other prominent uh, Göttingen professor Hugo uh, stressed that the law of uh, individual people cannot become the subject matter of the science of law. The scientific uh, unprofitability, unfro uh, unprofitability uh, of a separate uh, consideration of uh, different uh, legal orders, and the need to study national law in the context of foreign legal experience. Hugo elaborated the idea of verschiedenen uh, positive rechte, the diversity of positive law, the cognition of positive law as a reflection of the experience of different peoples. In elaborating the doctrine of Peter, uh, Peter, Hugo suggested to study the positive law of individual peoples, to seek causes, uh, causes and effects, and to compare variants. Um, uh, I um, uh, sh uh, can point more and more, but uh, I will economy a time. Uh, I can speak uh, about uh, English, uh, for example, uh, scholars, about Ukrainian scholars of that time, the models of uh, Kant, uh, but uh, I will uh, stress, let it be, Anselm von uh, Feuerbach, uh, my favorite, uh, the father of comparative law. Uh, Anselm von Feuerbach, uh, in an article on the criminal jurisprudence of the Koran, uh, uh, printed in 1800, uh, uh, noted that the knowledge of criminal policy, essential in criminal law, uh, follows from knowledge of the criminal laws in force of various nations. Without knowledge of the truly, uh, I'm sitting, without knowledge of the truly existing, without comparing various uh, legislations, without knowledge of the relation uh, of legislations of uh, different conditions of peoples, time, climate, the structure, uh, the, the structure, a priori nonsense uh, by one-sided philosophers is inevitable. So if we are not comparing the positive law, we have a nonsense, philosophical nonsense. And namely the historical and comparative studies should be the base of both philosophy and uh, uh, of law and legal politics. Um, uh, I will uh, uh, take something, uh, put something aside. Uh, during the second half of the 18th and the first third of uh, the 19th centuries, a doctrine was formed uh, concerning the purposes of uh, uh, comparative legal studies. And three groups of purposes of comparative legal studies were distinguished. Scientific purposes, value purposes, and practical purposes. Um, uh, I will uh, name uh, just theoretically them without examples. Okay, they may be relegated to the scientific purposes singled uh, during the period. Identification of peculiar elements of national law and the evaluation of national law. Forming the special or particular, uh, the groups of legal systems in law and classification uh, of uh, legal orders. Determination of general in law. The value purposes uh, were the next. Further mutual understanding, deepening uh, the humanistic worldview, defense against ideas of national exclusivity and supremacy. Among the practical purposes distinguished in that period uh, could be singled uh, substantive or formal constituting of national law, 
coordination of the elements of a complex national legal order, promoting the perfecting uh, and the, uh, the perfection of uh, national law with the assistance of borrowing foreign legal models, and ensuring the use of foreign law in the private law sphere and international economic relations. Uh, this is about the approach, the comparative uh, jurisprudence of comparative law as approach, uh, comparative approach in legal science. So it could be constituted just an approach within legal encyclopedia, within other theoretical disciplines. So one approach was uh, not, not to formulate a special discipline. Uh, and this approach was extremely popular. The second approach or the second dimension is the way of constructing a world picture. It's the most interesting as for me. The most important uh, manifestation of comparative legal thinking of uh, legal scholars was the forming against the background uh, of the bankruptcy of universalist legal ideologies of that time forming of non-metaphysical scientific picture of the world, consistent like structure, like interpretation structure in which elements were individual, the national law, uh, individual with big letter, uh, particular or the special, so groups of uh, legal orders, and general, so worldwide in uh, characteristics, in uh, legal development. The basis of this scientific picture became the vision of a legal map uh, of the world formed solely from national state legal orders as individual units, territorial and total in their scope. During the uh, first uh, half of, even first third of the 19th century, two theories of national state law were elaborated the socio-volitional uh, socio and the organic, uh, which in the material moments coincide as the formal and, sub and uh, substantive uh, aspects of a single doctrine of a national law, uh, national legal order, national legal system, if you prefer. Uh, it's also erroneous term uh, and misleading term. Legal order is much more... Uh, uh, is much better. But anyway, um, uh, and uh, they correlated with the theory on the distinctiveness of individual in law. The social, uh, social volitional uh, theory of national state law was based on the requirement of the territorial uh, subject conformity of a legal order to a civil society, to a nation, and to a state and uh, their identity relative to the contemporary development of law, despite the historical and functional difference. The conviction uh, that thanks to the state, national law acquires a final and expressive institutional form and territoriality. The territoriality of national state legal orders enabled the legal map, map of the world to be constructed solely from them. The sociality of will and statehood enables the legal order to be objectified and a man to be removed um, in, this, um, uh, in the state, in society, in nation, uh, in it, uh, as a subject of law and the su subjective rights of the man to be uh, removed. And trans uh, this idea, uh, this socio-evolutional um, theory, transformed national law into, in, into individual unit of legal development. The socio-evolutional nature of law also enabled the identity to be proclaimed of the is with the old, the formula of Hegel, uh, which means the self-sufficiency and exclusiveness of a positivist legal order. The requirement uh, of statehood for the national legal order finally separated law from other social regulators. The consideration of national state legal orders as based on social uh, will enabled them to be viewed as having equal value. 
The organic theory also considered national law to be a unit of uh, legal development. Uh, uh, I will illustrate the social volitional uh, uh, approach to understanding of uh, national legal order uh, could be more as associated with uh, historical philosophical school of the beginning of uh, 19th century. For example, if we are taking uh, most known dispute, uh, so so uh, so called uh, codification debates uh, in Germany, so Thibault is uh, on side of the social volitional understanding of law and the legal order, and Savigny is the organic uh, understanding of uh, uh, legal order. So for for example, for Thibault, uh, Anton Thibault, Anton Julius Thibault, uh, the legal order is uh, forming because of the will of the people of the nation, and so nation c can uh, change uh, its law uh, anytime. That's why uh, the nation, uh, any nation, a nation, uh, can uh, create uh, own codifi uh, codified uh, national legal order in any time. It can borrow it from France, uh, from France for example, as was uh, the case, or uh, form uh, uh, own uh, new codification to, uh, to, to finalize the, the formation of this uh, national order. And another school is historical school, the school of uh, Savigny. So the same, uh, it has to be national legal order. The national legal order is totality. But it, uh, the formation of this legal order is not so much volitional. Uh, it, uh, it comes from irrational will of the people. Is this irrational will, the will to preserve the traditions. And uh, traditions on uh, some uh, stage could be codified, it could be academical uh, stage of uh, legal development when academics, uh, scientists will codify the tradition. So uh, they will not uh, uh, just uh, imagine something or borrow something. They will take the law from uh, uh, national traditions and uh, just uh, form in the scientific way as a system. Uh, so they just polish uh, something that uh, developed organically. Um, so the organic theory also considered national law to be a unit of, of legal development as a totality, removing the individual, and the subjective right, uh, and uh, removing the subjective right of individual. It was ba uh, based on consideration of a nation as a natural population. So not co connected by will, but con connected as a natural, na uh, natural population, as a, in the animal wo world. Um, Simultaneously, based on uh, consideration of the nation, uh, uh, simultaneously endowed nation with a number of social and ethnocultural characteristics and social, socio psychological unity. Uh, within the framework of uh, such a vision, lawmaking is a part of a life of a nation and constantly accompanies uh, uh, um, its development irrespective of state building. Although the state building is considered to be an indicator of maturity of people. This does not deny the idea of social will, but makes the social will derivative, uh, derivative and determined one of the manifestations and the consequences of the life activity of a nation, and not its uh, constituent. Uh, the organic theory refuses the social will and the state uh, to be a value of, uh, uh, of and in uh, itself. Subordinized, uh, subordinates uh, the uh, state uh, to the nation. The organic theory more consistently created the grounds for consideration of national legal experiences as equal in character in uh, individuality and respective national legal orders as to be non-incidental and uh, phenomenal length in time. At the same time, the organic theory to a greater degree provided not only for formal autonomy but also substantive non-repetitiveness 
of national legal experience. Considered uh, this experience to be an extractable unity in nation, uh, to be an extractable unity with the spiritual and cultural calling and uh, development of uh, feminine. Um, uh, I shall cut myself. Um, uh, so, so we can see, and uh, really on numerous, very numerous uh, examples. Uh, I can show, but uh, not in one lecture, that uh, the idea of national legal order as a basic and dominant form of legal order become uh, uh, without, uh, undoubtful. Uh, but this is a form, so national legal orders could be different, but could be uh, at the same time uh, very likely or uh, uh, identical in the in their content, uh, so uh, the new idea also was created uh, of uh, distinctiveness of uh, each uh, national legal order. I will uh, not so much press on this theory, but it was also very uh, grounded at the time. Uh, the proclamation of legal scholars uh, of that period of the exclusiveness of the individuals means national legal orders, uh, individual, let me, individual national legal orders on the legal picture, uh, on the legal map of the world, was uh, accompanied uh, by the rethinking in principle of the essence and the role of general in law. Uh, because uh, before the 19th century, and before the final separation of uh, positivist uh, legal science from uh, philosophy and uh, uh, theosophy, uh, uh, the denominator, uh, the sign and uh, the uh, metaphor uh, at the same time of the general in law was natural law. So something is natural for all. Uh, but if uh, we consider natural law is not uh, exist, so what about the general trends and uh, or uh, general sameness or uh, if it uh, possible or not? If uh, at all general legal order is possible, it was a key uh, issue for the um, beginning of 19th century. Uh, the bankruptcy of ideas concerning the possibility of the formalization of any general in law in the form of uh, legal order was realized at that time and proclaimed by many uh, legal scholars who pointed to the absence of normative space for the general legal order uh, under conditions of recognition of the territoriality of sovereignty of states and also to its unsuitability. General law is unsuitable. For each country, concrete nation, this uh, speculatively constructed legal order would prove to be nil and alien simultaneous. This demonstrated uh, the then evaluations of the possibility of, uh, uh, of an extra-national legal order which emerged uh, in the views uh, on the nature of international law and the uh, dominance of uh, some peoples over others. So, if the general legal order, uh, its formation uh, is not possible, but the domination of, for example, of uh, France uh, over all Europe uh, at that time, or um, maybe it, it is possible, or um, uh, maybe international law can be a uh, general legal order for all. In, uh, but I'm speaking not about today, but about the uh, beginning of uh, 19th century. Legal scholars concluded that, that the formalization of the general in law was impossible outside the framework of national legal orders. The dominance always in essence territorially, socially limited and it's leading to limited substantive uh, changes, but could not, uh, and could not overcome the individual, so the national legal order, without the complete destruction thereof. And the international law acts as an external confirmation of the national state legal order. 
and the international law has only a concrete national material uh, expression. The general in law, in the view of legal scholars of uh, the beginning of 19th century, should have been embedded inside the very national state legal orders and outside the national legal orders could, could be only procedural, uh, processual, like process of, uh, uh, of uh, borrowing of, of something like that, but uh, like a trend uh, of uh, in, in law that could be general, but anyway it could not be uh, constituted as uh, one level order, the general level order. Under conditions of a general convention of legal scholars of that time relating to the insuperability and totalness of the form of the individual, so the national legal order, quests for general in law manifested in attempts to contemplate the substantive similarities in the development of national uh, legal orders through the ideas of the substantive identity or relative uh, substantive similarity. Uh, during the period here considered, uh, legal scholars uh, came to the conclusion on the impossibility of substantive identity of legal orders. Impossibility. And also uh, impossibility of a single invariable progress in the legal sphere. This progress always is affected primarily by a number of peculiarities and factors of concrete societies at a concrete time. Accordingly, uh, there uh, was not and could not be universally suitable positive law which might be accepted by all legal orders. Sorry. Less radical that uh, uniformity and more acceptable for legal scholars at that time appeared the idea of the relative substantive uh, similarity of legal order. Under conditions of multiplicity and non-coordination of uh, the content of national legal orders, uh, is material unity and studiality of all development of the principles of positive law possible? Legal scholars have acknowledged the limited suitability, relativity of the idea of such uh, development as one of the imminent trends toward uh, doctrinal convergence um, and uh, together with the trend toward preservation and the deepening of individuality of uh, national legal orders. And uh, they criticized uh, possible theological, uh, teleological implications of uh, uh, such trends uh, of convergence. The grounds for such a vision uh, were uh, the ideas that uh, general in law, which has no own form, correlated only with the distinctive elements within the framework of the national law. And the transmission of social legal experience is historical and concrete from one uh, national legal order to another national legal order. Another approach to the study of the general in law during the, uh, this period was the doctrine of the dialogue of uh, legal system, uh, legal systems. And the legal scholars singled out two interconnected by but distinct spheres of this dialogue within and between national legal systems. The internal dialogue inside the national law relying on the idea of the non-self-sufficiency of distinctive elements of national law. Uh, uh, and uh, of singling out identifi in the, in the identifying uh, and being aware of uh, certain elements as substantially general. So, in any national law could be identified distinctive elements and the elements that are general, that uh, when we compare national legal uh, systems, the general for, uh, or common 
and I will say about the difference here about general and common in this uh, context. Uh, context. Um, Moreover, moreover, the aggregate of the general and peculiar elements of national law is not the simple sum, but represents a struggle and a balance, and the result uh, and the components uh, of uh, uh, this uh, struggle may consequently be determined only a posteriori. So, what will be chosen by national legislator, by national judge, or something like that, more, uh, to rely more on distinctive and traditional elements, or the elements that considered to be general uh, for all uh, peoples, uh, what to stress. Um, uh, so the dialogue became uh, an internal interaction of singled out and uh, aware distinctive and general elements. And legal school scholars or law makers, depending on their position, uh, might make a choice in favor of the priority uh, development of the uh, distinctive elements, of the general elements, or both of them, understanding the inevitability of internal pluralism of any uh, national legal order. If uh, we uh, will remember the ideas of Sacco uh, about uh, four months, so the base of these ideas uh, have uh, two centuries uh, um, roots. Uh, the conception of external, so we, we uh, talked, uh, uh, I, I talked to you, okay, but we are talking anyway, but we have a dialogue. Uh, the conception of external di dialogue of legal orders provided uh, for the generalization of the process of uh, similarities arising in law as a result of uh, borrowing, correlation and competition of legal orders. Although the general element may emanate uh, from the unity of biological, physical and anthropological nature of man, it, unlike this nature, develops and is transformed in the process of human interaction in society and between societies. Legal scholars agreed that during the interaction uh, of individuals national legal orders between themselves, they act as a whole, unite, uh, unities of the general and distinctive elements. And the result of uh, such interaction between them will be the role uh, and the volume growth of the common elements, disseminated in more than one uh, national law, which nonetheless do not lose the imminent character within national legal orders. Uh, the common in the concept of external di dialogue ceased to be perceived as general and uh, unavoidable, but as concrete social, disseminated in a certain limited group of legal orders, and mutable as a variable uh, aggregate of interactions, which primarily is not material, but a procedural reality and may be materialized, this dialogue could be materialized, outside national orders only in scientific text as analytical unity. Uh, so uh, national order could not be overcome anyway, and supranational orders could not exist anyway. At the same time, the idea develops of uh, procedural character of national distinctiveness in law. Distinctiveness could be uh, the peculiarities of dialogue, so it could, it could not be only uh, uh, coming from history, but uh, we can be, uh, our national society could be distinctive because we have a peculiarities of uh, different dialogues with, uh, uh, in different circles of legal orders. And we can uh, participate uh, in the creation of uh, era, of epoch or not. Um, Okay, um, I, uh, I will uh, cut myself, uh, but uh, one more element uh, in this um, idea of uh, searching of general in law was the idea of interaction of legal systems, and in that period, large conceptualizations 
of interactions of legal uh, orders were created in different countries. And uh, 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 this understanding of uh, philosophical, theoretical <coughs> aspects of interactions of national legal orders and the same with the concrete techniques of uh, borrowing, of evaluating, uh, of interaction uh, between legal orders. And uh, uh, the most important element of uh, the whole picture of that day <coughs> becomes the idea of social particular or spe uh, social special in law as an element uh, of the comparativistic picture of the world, which became um, um, this arose, which arose from contradiction between the a priori proclamation of the universality of legal development and the study of concrete mechanism, mechanisms of uh, the interactions of uh, legal orders and also from uh, contradictions, contradictoriness uh, of determinations of uh, the limits of, uh, of determination of the limits of ethnocultural traditions of peoples, not much with the boundaries of the states, and the identification of links not of equal value between different national level orders. Okay, the embodiment of uh, this idea of special in law became the idea of uh, legal families, and uh, first classifications were made. And uh, the theory of uh, legal families were, was created. There were some uh, other ideas about uh, civilizations, about uh, race and uh, law, other things. Uh, but all scholars uh, claimed that the idea of legal uh, of uh, families is is a okay. key. And uh, maybe some uh, bigger uh, entities uh, could be imagined, uh, but in law they could not be catched uh, appropriately. Only legal family uh, could be catched uh, with uh, its uh, stable characteristics uh, to be re real uh, legal characteristics. And <coughs> I still have uh, uh, some minutes. Uh, so the set uh, a lot of questions. Uh, the, uh, really yes, questions. yes, but uh, uh, I still have uh, ten minutes. This, uh, the third dimension. So the last dimension of uh, comparative law, as a cluster of comparative legal disciplines, together with the idea of uh, integrality of legal science during the period. Uh, which I considered, uh, the doctrine uh, developed concerning uh, the differentiation of uh, the legal science, the consideration of legal science as to be a complex of scientific disciplines, especially branch disciplines, a general positive jurisprudence, and positivist philosophy of law. Some legal scholars insisted on the comparative character of knowledge within the confines of general positivist jurisprudence, or expressly identified this with uh, discipline comparative jurisprudence. In this context, one may assert the pluralism uh, of the organization of comparative legal knowledge at that period, both as the foundation of the general doctrine on, on law as, uh, uh, and, uh, as, as one or as complex of scientific and instructional disciplines, comparative jurisprudence, comparative history of law, and comparative branch legal disciplines. Comparative jurisprudence was defined for the first time as a theoretical methodological approach in 1800 and as a scientific discipline in 1810 and consciously elaborated during the first third of the uh, 19th century in different uh, national legal schools in Europe. Comparative jurisprudence was re regarded as one of the basic general legal disciplines, together with his history of law, encyclopedia of law, philosophy of law. Uh, the object of comparative jurisprudence uh, considered to be national legal orders and processes of their interaction, and the subject, the trends of the development uh, of national legal orders, determination of the individual, particular, and uh, general in the elements of national legal orders, which is the basis for forming general doctrine uh, on law. 
conceptions and the creation of uh, theoretical methodological grounds for uh, branch level sciences, for country law disciplines and the philosophy of law. Um, I will cut myself uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, and uh, we'll say more. Um, that the second, uh, um, um, I will uh, say that uh, the first, uh, by the way, the first cathedras of comparative law are not uh, these that uh, uh, described in the uh, handbooks on comparative law and on history and comparative law. Uh, I found uh, much earlier uh, chairs of comparative law, especially in Germany in the uh, 1820s and uh, uh, in the traditional uh, comparative, uh, handbooks, uh, comparative law handbooks uh, or only one or two journals are mentioned on comparative law. I found only in Germany about 15 journals, 15 journals at that time dedicated to comparative study of law, not counting uh, the country law uh, journals. For, for example, uh, German uh, journals uh, dedicated to French law, I am not counting them. Only journals uh, that were dedicated to comparison of different laws. About 15 uh, journals. A lot of whether well, theoretical, uh, kind of theoretical, practical, uh, different uh, articles in them. I'm naming uh, them in uh, my books. Uh, I cannot name uh, all of them. And uh, the same uh, chairs uh, were created in different uh, uh, in different uh, universities. Chairs uh, on uh, comparative jurisprudence, Verglation uh, de Rechtwissenschaft. Uh, and um, uh, the um, uh, lecturing on uh, comparative jurisprudence, course compar comparative jurisprudence, or another courses, philosophy of law and comparative jurisprudence, or courses like uh, 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 selected problems of comparative jurisprudence, were in many universities in the first half, uh, in the first third of uh, 19th century. And, uh, um, um, okay, uh, no, not so many times to, to name all. The arising, um, the second discipline is the comparative or general history of law. Uh, it's linked, uh, it's arising linked with the requirement of legal scholars to universalize the subject matter of the uh, history of law. And uh, um, uh, this uh, claim, this requirement was actively being formed and uh, the discipline being formed uh, at the first uh, set of uh, 19th century and also with gradual separation uh, out uh, the political legal problem field within the framework of general history uh, throughout the period. Uh, the contemporary level of processing of the sources give grounds to date the emergence of this discipline no later than 1818. Uh, the comparative history of law in its uh, conceptualizations uh, of that time was defined especially as a separate legal and also comparative and also historical science which formed at the juncture uh, of the history of law, philosophy of law and comparative jurisprudence and that should accumulate and generalize, particularly on the basis of comparative and chronological analysis, knowledge about history and contemporary state of law, and the legal thought of various people, which was uh, the basis for elaborating and clarifying uh, concepts and uh, cognition of the essence of legal phenomena. Uh, the idea and the formation of uh, comparative uh, legal history it's for sure still uh, this origin in a smoke because uh, first that uh, could be found are chairs but conceptualizations uh, had to be before chairs for the moment they are not found but they will be found I'm sure um, uh, 
Uh, and well, I think uh, maybe we have five minutes because I want to leave time for questions. So oh, five minutes, yes, okay, okay. Five minutes will be uh, good for me. And about uh, comparative uh, approach in branch level disciplines. Uh, the forming of this approach and the respective scientific and instructional disciplines occurred uh, during a latency period and can be precisely singled uh, out at least from the beginning of the 18th century. <coughs> the first known conceptualization thereof of comparative approach in uh, branch legal disciplines appeared, occurred in 1800. Uh, one may affirm the active development of this approach, including <coughs> on the basis of the uh, singling out the complex of branch comparative uh, legal instructional uh, disciplines uh, during the first third of the 19th century. Although existing sources do not provide grounds for asserting precisely the conscious forming of the theoretical methodological basis for the respective branch scientific discipline. The question remains open and requires special studies. Uh, despite of the first uh, set of uh, uh, 19th century, there were uh, some textbooks, uh, uh, especially in comparative uh, criminal law, uh, and uh, with such a name, comparative criminal law, and uh, a, a mass of comparative branch legal courses in uh, universities especially in German universities. Uh, and the claim uh, for to do comparative disciplines and in, uh, uh, instructional one, by the way, appears in 1804 uh, by Parisian judges. And uh, then uh, in Italy in 1805, and then in Germany. So it's not a, a phenomenon of one country. And the same was in Poland, the same was in the universities on the territory of uh, Ukraine, the same was in other countries. So the formation of a comparative legal worldview, comparative legal approach uh, for forming a new legal science was an uh, uh, all Europe phenomenon. And uh, transcended Europe, for example, for North America also at that time. And uh, the idea of uh, forming uh, autonomous disciplines was also <coughs> where, uh, quite uh, uh, substantive. This claim was quite substantive and uh, uh, conceptualizations of uh, such disciplines of, as comparative law and uh, comparative uh, legal history were made. And we can speak more, uh, but uh, anyway, we have to stop, and I'm stopping at time. Yeah. <laughs> so I thank you.